Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be showing off the best Barbarian build for the new Throw Barbarian, which is basically going to be all about Ancient Spear. So let's go ahead and go over the gameplay as well as the build guide. All the gameplay that you guys are seeing is going to be equivalent to T16, which is a GR75. However, the build is capable of pushing at least as of 130 as of right now over on the live server. So first off, let's go ahead and talk about the gameplay as far as the skills go and kind of how you use them. There are multiple variations of the build, but they're very, very similar. So let's go ahead and get started with the, the uh, gameplay. So first off, uh, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using Furious Charge to go around. It doesn't matter the rune that you select anyways, because you're going to be getting the effects of all of the runes. But what you're just doing is just charging around so you can gain your Fury, and then you're going to be expending all of your Fury with Ancient Spear Boulder Toss. That's going to be using all of your Fury, but depending on the amount of Fury that you have, that's going to be how much you actually deal in terms of damage, because it expends all of it and does a percent based off of the amount that you spend. Uh, next up, you can use Warcry, or there are some people that are using uh, Ignore Pain. Uh, those are kind of things that you can swap out, uh, but Veteran's Warning is kind of the go-to for most people, which is going to increase your dodge chance, and then you're going to be using uh, Wrath of the Berserker uh, for both of the builds. It doesn't matter the rune you select because you're going to get all of them, and then you're going to want the Battle Rage Bloodshed. That's going to make you do a massive amount of bonus damage based on the crit hit damage that you already have dealt. So basically, you hit someone with Boulder Toss as long as you crit with it. In in the lower GRs, you'll basically melt everything all around you. That's how we're melting everything super fast without even hitting them with the boulder toss. It just basically does enough damage to clear out most of the trash mobs up until like GR 90-ish. You'll be able to clear out most of the stuff with just relatively decent gear. And then you will have weapon throw with balanced weapon. So this is going to be our generator. We basically don't use it at all with the exception of maybe the fight on the Rift Guardian because you're not going to be able to generate enough charges with your Furious Charge. But that's basically the skills and that's how you use them. So keep up all your buffs, which are going to be Wrath of the Berserker as well as your Battle Rage. And then pretty much you just use Weapon Throw on the boss, but sometimes if you run out of targets for your charge, you can use Weapon Throw. But Balanced Weapon is kind of the only go-to uh, for the uh, generation of Fury because uh, you don't actually deal damage with this at all. This is just used for uh, Fury generation. Now, in terms of the passives, we're going to be running Rampage for more damage and more survivability because it just gives us main stat. We're running Boon of Bull Cathos for more cooldown on the uh, skill Wrath of the Berserker. Then we can either run No Escape, uh, Berserker Rage is kind of a few different variations, but all builds will basically have Rampage and Boon of Bull Cathos. But you can run No Escape and Berserker Rage, or you can run Relentless for extra survivability. So while you are under a certain amount of life, you're going to be able to have uh, damage reduction, which is actually quite nice. In terms of what's inside the cube, now you can swap things in and out here. There are some variations, but Measure Schmitz, or you can run the Furnace for more damage. Um, then pretty much all builds will run the Skolar's Salvation for more damage on your Ancient Spear. And then Royal Ring of Grandeur is gonna be in all the builds. It's just basically the Furnace is the only thing that most people are swapping in and out, but you can equip one or the other. Like if you wanna run Mortex Brace inside of the Kanai's Cube, you can do that as well. Uh, but you want Mortex Brace usually equipped because this has a variation where it can roll from a set number, where Mortex Brace is just like Wrath of Berserker gains all of the runes. So uh, it's usually easier to run Mortex Brace equipped. But again, you can swap them in and out. Then you wanna run Royal Ring of Grandeur, or you can technically equip it and have the Band of Might. Uh, depending on your rolls on it, Bandamite has higher potential to roll better because Royal Ring of Grandeur always rolls with that extra attack speed and the life on hit. So it's kind of hard to get a really good Royal Ring of Grandeur. But um, if you can, yeah, you can swap them in and out just earlier on. And then later down the line, if you get a good Bandamite, then you can start rolling on it. Um, now, in terms of the differences in the gems, really, it really comes down to you can run Bane of the Stricken or you can run Gogok of Swiftness. Currently, at the time of recording, the guy that is rank one is playing Gogok of Swiftness, but most people are actually opting for the Bane of the Stricken. Uh, the Gogok of Swiftness will give you extra cooldown reduction and also adds dodge chance, which really helps out with survivability. Uh, but that's like the only difference in terms of the legendary gems that people are running. Now, in terms of like the regular gems, uh, people are running all diamonds. It's for survivability. 
Alternatively, yeah, some people are throwing in rubies, but if you want to push the highest, you need more survivability, so diamonds are the way to go. Um, in terms of what we're running uh, for our gear, we're running the six-piece bonus, or essentially it's going to be five with the Royal Ringer Grandeur, uh, plus the Captain Crimson set. There's nothing too particularly uh, niche with this build. Uh, it's kind of the same as every other Diablo build where you want crit hit chance, crit hit damage, um, and you want uh, area damage, as well as cooldown reduction on all the pieces of gear that you can get it. And remember, you don't want weapon throw to have damage you want ancient spear damage that's going to be on your helmet as well as on your boots for extra damage uh and then we are running the captain crimson set i'll mouse over the pieces of the gear but again it's pretty much the same as every diablo build so pretty much just create a chance on the helmet as well as ancient spear damage uh get airy damage where you can get it uh and cooldown reduction we can that can be on the shoulders uh that can be on the gloves as well now the chest piece, nothing too particular with this. If you can get all resist, that's kind of nice. But if you get like elite damage reduction, that's fine as well. For the amulet, as well as one of the rings, we're going to run the Endless Walk set. So that's the Traveler's Pledge plus the Compass Rose. And again, same thing, crit, chance crit damage. Once you are high enough in the Paragon department or if you're augmenting your gear, you don't need main stat. What you're going to be looking for is specifically getting that elemental damage. In our case, it's going to be actually uh, physical. Uh, so try to get that on your amulet if you can. But if you get main stat instead of the physical, that's totally fine too. Uh, next up, Mortix uh, Brace will be uh, what you're going to be running uh, over here. And uh, you're again looking for basically the same thing. Uh, you want to get physical elemental damage on it and then create a chance just like you would on every single Diablo build. For the belt, nothing too particular with that. Same thing with the pants. If, just if you can, getting all resist is definitely nice and getting life percent on the belt is also great. Um, but yeah, Band of Might is great for getting damage reduction with the secondary after using your Furious Charge. You take 80% uh, up to, uh, it goes from 60 to 80% uh, damage reduction for eight seconds. And that's really easy to keep up in this build because that's how you kind of move around. So great for that. Uh, crit chance, crit damage, area damage, cooldown reduction. Those are all great stats uh, to get uh, on your rings. So any variation of those are going to be what you're looking forward to getting. Um, ideally though, I would say as a recommendation, try to get cooldown reduction before the area damage. The reason why is that one or two seconds where Wrath of the Berserker is not up, you just die instantly sometimes. So keep that up as much as you possibly can. And again, cooldown reduction will help. So for our weapons, we're going to run the 300th Spear. This is going to increase our damage of Weapon Throne Ancient Spear uh, for the secondary. We're going to have to equip both of these because Measure Schmitz is going to be a two-hander. So we need to actually uh, equip both of these. So more damage with uh, uh, the Ancient Spear, and then the Ariat's Law, also more damage uh, with our Ancient Spear via also increasing the weapon throw uh, generation of Fury based on the distance. So if you are on a boss, specifically on the Rift Guardian, although these are GR-75, uh, so we're going to be literally one-shotting them, but as you climb higher in like the 100 plus, um, you will try to move away from the Rift Guardian. That way you can actually generate enough resource to actually one-shot them, uh, and also because of the Zaystone of Vengeance over here uh, but uh, that's gonna increase your uh, damage and then ancient uh, spear refunds up to 50 fury based on the distance of the enemy hit and it resets your fury cap to the limit but it also can actually go above the uh, limit of your uh, normal fury and because you expend everything, it's going to add a lot more damage. Um, in terms of what we're putting in, basically same thing as every other Diablo build, more crit damage with the emeralds. But as far as the legendary gems, I already mentioned the Gohawk of Swiftness, but the two that you're going to be seeing in every single build are going to be Bane of the Trap. So that's just very common. It's just more damage that you're getting uh, based off of enemies that are uh, affected by control impairing effects. And then we've got the uh, Zaystone of Vengeance. This is actually going to increase your damage based on how far away you are from the enemy enemy and the way that this works is you can basically throw it and it's going to hit people like off screen potentially uh, so it's great for that um, there's extra damage plus it can have that chance to stun the enemy so they're affected by the controlled impairing effect so that'll be nice as well for survivability um, then yeah just two piece captain crimsons it doesn't have to be the uh, belt and pants you can run the boots and the belt um, it's kind of up to you but you will definitely run the belt in every single build it's just did you roll good pants or did you roll good boots Totally swap it up to you uh, for your liking. Not really too many other things that you can change other than like there are some people running Ignore Pain. 
Um, I've seen some people try Squirt's Necklace with the Convention of Elements. That's going to give you a massive amount of damage. However, survivability definitely will be a problem if you decide to go that route. But remember, you can swap in some of the passes, but pretty much Bone and Bolt, Kathos, and Rampage are on every single one. Um, again, we're taking basically the top 10 and kind of using those as a source of reference. But it's a really fun build. It's in fact one of the best builds as of right now. It's number one on the leaderboard and as well as there are some other variants of Barbarian, but as far as like rank one right now, this is the go-to Barbarian build for season 26, just because it is also the new build. This is the only new build that we are getting in season 26 uh, for Diablo 3 that's like completely different. There are a few changes here and there with some other classes, but this is the only actual new set over here. Uh, so what it does is really just increasing the damage of uh, your uh, Ancient Spear. Uh, you do get all of the runes as far as what we're running with the runes. I already kind of explained them, but you don't need to run any specific rune for like Furious Charge or Wrath of the Berserker because it gives you all of those anyways because Mortex Brace as well as the Raycor set. But uh, yeah, uh, it also technically, uh, Furious Charge gains every uh, effect of every rune and then for every 1% life you are missing, you also technically do get extra damage, but it's kind of hard to maintain. There were people in the past trying like the, uh, there's a chest piece that gives you more crit uh, as long as you are under a certain amount of life, but it's very hard to run. But for the most part, people don't really use that effect too much. Um, but also with a six piece bonus, when you hit an enemy with Furious Charge, you're gonna be generating, you'll see right now on the bottom of my like buff ball, we're at 71, 73, 70. That's going to be a number that you don't really need to maintain. That's why I didn't even mention it for the gameplay. You just charge around, it's gonna be your mobility anyways, but it's gonna increase the damage of your next ancient spear and it causes uh, multiple, essentially boulders instead of spears coming out. And then it will uh, consume a maximum of five stacks to give you that massive amount of bonus damage but again you don't really need to maintain that or pay attention to it very much as long as you're charging into a bunch of uh, packs and uh, you'll have more than enough but anyways that's going to go ahead and wrap up things for the build let me know guys what you think of the new barbarian build i think it's a blast it's literally the best build and it is really fun to play and we're only paragon 720 and we've done gr 100 plus really easy my gems are like 20s and 30s in the gameplay that you guys are seeing uh but nonetheless that's going to be it for the video if you guys enjoyed it drop a like on it if you're new and you want to see more diablo and more gaming stuff in the future. Diablo Mortal is just around the corner as well as Torchlight Infinite and we'll be covering those games as well. And also Path of Exile's got a new expansion pack that will be coming very soon. We'll be covering that. But take care. I'll catch you guys in the next video and I'm out. Peace.